The chain rule is another of our derivative rules, and it helps us specifically take the derivative of composition of two functions. Um, so if you have one function that's placed inside of another function, then chain rule is what will help you take its derivative. So for instance, if you had f of g of x, where g of x is inside or composed with the function f, and we wanted to differentiate that, the chain rule says this. It says to take the derivative of the outer function, but don't mess with the inside yet. So f prime of g of x, differentiate the outer layer, but just copy the inside, and then follow that with the derivative of the inner layer. So you do these derivatives one at a time. You don't just differentiate everything all at once. That's a, a very common mistake that we see a lot of times. That we just differentiate one layer at a time, progressively working our way inwards, and just adding each su successive term as a product onto the end. So here's a simple example just to begin with. We have the derivative of sine of the quantity x cubed plus 1. So these chain rule problems are pretty easy to spot. You, sh you should clearly see an outer layer and an inner layer. Um, these layers are usually something like a trig function of something other than just x, like x cubed plus 1. Um, chain rule is often used with radicals if you have a big square root with stuff underneath the radical other than just x. If you have a logarithm of a certain number of uh, terms inside other than just x, uh, so on and so forth. The chain rule is used very, very often. So let's let's try it with sine x cubed plus 1. All right here, I'll try to color code these. We'll do them in, in different colors. Um, I'll let the sine be the orange, that's the outside. And we'll let the green be the x cubed plus 1, that's the inside. So I'm just going to take this slow here. All right, I'm going to take the derivative of the outside, derivative of the outside, derivative of sine, that is cosine. And I'm just going to copy the inside, just leave the inside alone, x cubed plus 1, period. Um, and then I'm going to follow that with whatever the derivative of the inside was. And the derivative of x cubed plus 1 is the quantity 3x squared. Now normally the chain rule uh, requires you to rewrite this answer at the end because you're getting all these straggly constants and variables towards the end of the chain rule. But convention says we normally like to write constants and variables at the front of any expression. So we'd leave this answer 3x squared times the cosine of quantity x cubed plus 1. And that's it. That's the chain rule. You just differentiate one layer at a time. Let's try another one real quick. Here we have f of t equals the square root, not of just t, but the square root of 4t squared plus 1. Now make sure we remember our, our basic algebra skills. Please, please, please remember that the radical cannot split over addition. Radicals can split over products but you cannot take the square root of 4t squared plus the square root of 1 and just differentiate it that way. That's, that's bad algebra. Well, instead, I see the composition, so I'm going to do this in layers. Uh, now, if we remember how to differentiate a square root, we'd want to start by rewriting this as 4t squared plus 1 to the 1 half power so that it looks like a power. A square root is equivalent to saying a 1 half power. So now I see very clearly my layers. I'll, I'll circle them. The 1 half is the outer layer, and the 4t squared plus 1 is the inner layer. So let's, let's do this slowly, term by term. f prime of t would be equal to 1 half, power rule, 1 half comes down, 1 half blank to the minus 1 half. Now what goes in the blank? Is it 8t, since that's the derivative of the inside? No, it's not. We just copy the inside from the original function. So it would be 4t squared plus 1. And then we follow that with the derivative of the inside, which is 8t. 8t. Okay, uh, last step. Again, chain rule requires us a lot of times to clean this up a little bit. So f prime of t would be, 
see there would be a big fraction. This expression with the negative one half would move to the denominator due to the negative exponent and become a square root again. Square root of 4t squared plus 1. And then you'd have 8 times a half, that's 4, and there's a t. So the final answer would be 4t divided by the square root of 4t squared plus 1. All right, um, let's, let's try one last example here. This, this one's kind of difficult, but I, I saved it till last. Um, here, if you look, start looking for your layers, you actually notice something strange. The outermost layer is I've got cosine squared of the quantity 3x squared plus 1. So the, the squared here is the outermost layer. Cosine is being squared. The cosine is what you might call the inner layer but then if you look a little closer the 3x squared plus 1 is inside of that so this is also a chain rule problem but this is a chain rule problem with three layers now that looks initially very intimidating but if you just think about it you have three layers here what would the chain rule say it would say differentiate the outer layer and don't mess with the inside just leave it g of h of x and then follow it with the derivative of that. But when you think about what would be the derivative of g of h of x, that would require another quotient rule. So as long as we're careful with our terms, the derivative of the quote-unquote outside, meaning g, we get g prime of h of x, where we left the inside alone, followed by the derivative of the innermost part. So again, it's like layers in an onion. We're just peeling back one at a time. So let's try this algebra here. Let's see how it goes. Actually go down so I have more room. F prime of x would be the derivative of the outer layer. That's the 2, the square. Bring the 2 down. Cosine to the first, power rule, cosine to the first of 3x squared plus 1. Okay. Now, being that this outermost layer is done, uh, I'll have some students that will mark it out or cross it out to signify that that's gone now, it's been dealt with. Now I have to follow that with the derivative of what's left, cosine of 3x squared plus 1. So now the outer layer, I'll switch colors, is the cosine and its derivative is minus sine of 3x squared plus 1. And then I'll follow that derivative with the derivative of the innermost part, which would be 6x, six 6x. Six so a little bit of cleanup here at the end. Um, you have some like terms. 6 times 2 is 12. So you have 12x. This negative can move to the front. And then we have negative 12x sine 3x squared plus 1 times cosine 3x squared plus 1. And uh, we'll, we'll just leave this answer this way. There's likely some other types of simplifications we can do. Uh, for instance, there's a, a trig identity that jumps out at me for 2 sine theta cosine theta. There's something that you can do to condense that, but um, I don't think we'll go quite that far. I think we'll just stop right here because that, that seems like a pretty good stopping point. Now, if these examples looked a little bit on the simpler side, especially some of these ones up here, um, I'll have another video where I do some of the mix and match rules between the product rule and quotient rule and chain rule and to look at some more difficult examples there.